Hello, today we'll talk about Bitcoin and blockchain. In this paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2007, Satoshi laid out a particular technique by which you could create a currency that you could trust using a technology that can be termed as a blockchain. As you can see in the figure, certain transactions are registered with certain combinations of keys and that effectively forms a set of blocks that are connected to each other and uh, to prove if the block is accurate or the information is held is accurate you have to exercise certain proof of work which basically ensures that you know a person who is not you know with the best intent cannot quite easily fool the system and you can see that in the text it says if a greedy attacker is able to assemble more CPU power than all the honest nodes he would have to choose between using it to defraud people by stealing back his payments or using it to, new, to generate new coins so we assume that he's forced to create new coins rather than mess up the system uh, which obviously is not a great assumption but that's how the system behaves and uh, when you go down the paper, there are techniques of verifying a particular payment and how to split the, the notes into pieces or currency into pieces, as well as how privacy can be ensured when you're transacting between two parties so that you don't have to expose your own name. You can use some other tactics to do it. And that's what uh, Satoshi basically proposed. And he even gave the calculations about given that p is the probability of an honest node finding the next block while they're verifying and q is the probability that the attacker finds the next block gets the advantage to destroy the integrity of the system he presented that such an arrival could be in a poisson distribution and with certain formulae he tried to prove that it is increasingly less likely that somebody could break the chain so he even gave the uh, C++ code to figure it out to see if tax success probability can be calculated. So what we're going to do today is assuming that you know what the test code that uh, Satoshi has given is correct we will write this code. So I copied and pasted the code from the paper but obviously the code is written in C so we will convert it to Zcube's language so obviously there is no need for any types we can just replace all type names with var and uh, you can see that the code is fairly easily converted what satoshi gave fairly easily here so and that's what the code is now let's see if we can run this particular code just for testing first it actually did compile or did did run so let me give some values here like two comma four and the answer is this okay let's see so Satoshi had given some examples here about uh, Q being point one and Z being zero and so forth so Q being point one and this being zero the answer we get is one and let's see if that's what satoshi got that is correct and let's say for point one and one it is point two zero four five eight and that's what satoshi got and he calculated for attempts uh, zero to ten and then he changed the probability of the attacker to be point three and recalculated and so forth and uh, there is an assumption in this paper that you can very clearly see that he says assuming that p is greater than q given an assumption that p is greater than q that the that means that the bad guy has less horsepower you know to do his calculations effectively uh, or the probability that the attacker finds the next block is always less than the uh, probability of the honest node finding the next block uh, now I don't know if that will always be the case uh, but let's see if you know we change this to two 
for example, uh, whether our numbers match with what Satoshi has. And you can see that Satoshi would have gotten 0 0.50, 0 050, and that's what we got. So let's just try to arrayify this function. And then we can go in and change this to 1 to 10. And we get this listing. And let's see if Satoshi had gotten those values. Z equal to, let's start from 0 here. So it's exactly the same. So you can see it starts from z equal to 0 is probability is 1, then the next one is 0 0.02, sorry, 0 0.20458, then 0 0.0509, then 0 0.013, 0 0.0034, and so forth until 0 0.000012. So it's a falling probability. That means with um, if we start with an assumption that the uh, dishonest node has a probability of 0.1 in uh, getting it right, um, the probability that he can continue to be right falls off pretty dramatically. So let's put this on live and see if I change this to 0.3, are we getting Satoshi's calculation? And we'll compare it here. Yeah, I think it is 0 to 50 in steps of 5 is what Satoshi has done. So let's see if that matches. Yeah, so it's 1.0, 0.1773, 0 0.41, 0 0.010, and 0 0.00248. 006, 0001, and so forth. So if we take 50, uh, ours is, uh, yeah, it's a fairly, very low number. Um, so for 45, it is 0 0.0002, which is what Satoshi got. Now let's see if, uh, so if we had increased the probability from 0.3 to another number, like let's say 0.42, and we're getting close to 0.5, you can see that the uh, probability even after 50 steps is still 0.71. It's fairly high. Uh, the attacker would succeed. So for greater than, if P is greater than Q, it's okay. But if Q is greater than P, obviously it, uh, the attacker has a uh, high success probability. So for something like 0.5, or let's say 0.43, um, let's see if we can go to 500, and we can see that the property drops to zero, you know, pretty close to zero around 50 steps. But if this probability was four, it'll take probably, I would say, you know, about 200 steps or so to get to a very insignificant number. Let's say we put 0.5, the probability is one. Basically, he will succeed at some point. Um, and uh, so effectively, it, it's showing that we are able to find in an interactive way what Satoshi had mentioned for us. Now let's take it further. So there is a way to figure out what that z value should be and that is the tactic um, using the function called x4 so what x4 does is it takes the function as the first parameter and we write the function such that it'll be in terms of an x and then say at what point does it does the result of this function reach this value so it's a reverse of doing this loop and figuring out where it's going to reach 0 0.001 instead you say what should be the x for this function which is expressed in terms of x so that x is going to be the number of steps a function to reach point the the small value and it gives us 10.2188 so that from here you see that it reaches 0 0.001 around 10, 10 here. So that's why you got a result 
of 10.21. Now let's take it even further. So let's see if we can run this x4 itself on another loop where this value of 0.1 is now being analyzed. This value of 0.1 is now being analyzed as y. And y can vary from 0.01 to 0.45 in steps of 0.05. So let's run this particular one and see for different probabilities of, of q that the attacker finds the next block of 0.01 to 0.41. Let's see, let's put it like 0.46 or something. Um, what are the number of steps that we have to take to reach a probability of um, success of this much? Probability being the small value. And you can see that as the Q value increases from 0.01 to 0 0.06, 0 0.11, and so forth, the number of steps also keep increasing. So as the um, probability of the attacker finds next block increases, the uh, number of steps the attacker has to take fails um, and uh, that's what we are seeing here. So, so here is a listing uh, from 0 to 0.5 in terms of the number of steps that you need to take and for 0 it's, it gives a high value because 0 probability is not really to be considered but what we need to notice are the other numbers like 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0.15 and so forth and you can see the number of steps increase by uh, from 0, 6 onwards till almost 600. So we see that the blockchain and Bitcoin concepts depend on the probability of the attacker's success, the amount of computing power that person has and a bunch of keys that are based on the public private key concepts. Uh, but all of these can be questionable once uh, quantum computers are there or if the attacker has enormous amounts of computing power. So some of these things, you know, just to keep in mind, uh, we kind of understand how uh, Satoshi thought about this process and tried to place all of these in a probability-based manner. Thank you.